Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can combine three modifiers to create a rope effect like this. Let's dig into it. The rope we're going to look at is made up of three strands that are twisted together. So what we're going to do is create the smallest section of rope we can, duplicate that, and then control it with a curve. The first thing we're going to do is create our basic shape. We'll start by adding a circle. We'll shrink it down to size. Since this circle is going to represent one strand, let's make this one about 10 centimeters. One easy way to do that is to use the Loop Tools add-on. If you don't already have the Loop Tools add-on enabled, just go up to Edit, Preferences, and under Add-ons, type Loop. And make sure Loop Tools is checked. With your circle selected, right-click, go to Loop Tools, and choose Circle. From the extra settings menu that pops up, you can choose a radius. Since 0.01 here is equal to 10 millimeters, I'll change this to 0.005 for 5 millimeters. Now we're going to want our rope to be twisted around a center point. So I'm going to move this circle off center with the origin. If we take a look at this image of rope, let's say we're adding our circle right here. This loop follows this path, goes under both of these two, and re-emerges right here. Similarly, the next braid starts here, goes under, and comes up here. The next braid starts here, goes under, and comes up here. And so what we'll do is have the first braid start here, the next one start just above it, and the third one start just above that. Make sure to apply scale. Next we're going to add a screw modifier. Initially the screw modifier only goes around the selected axis and doesn't offset at all. So to have the screw offset we'll need to increase the screw setting. Since each of these parts of the braid are 10 millimeters tall, we're going to want this one to show up 30 millimeters higher than it is now. So under screw, we'll type in 30 millimeters. That gives us this shape. Because we've had this come around 360 degrees, this is now a repeatable shape. We could, of course, increase the iterations to increase the length of our rope. Another way to increase the length would be to add an array modifier. Instead of using relative offset, we'll use constant offset. We'll set the x distance to zero and the z distance to 30 millimeters. Now the length of our rope is controlled by the count. Now we'd like to add some shape to this rope. To do that, we're gonna use a curve modifier. First, go ahead and add a bezier curve. This will control the shape of our object. Go ahead and add a curve modifier. Choose the bezier curve as the curve object. Now one of the keys to using the curve modifier effectively is to make sure the object with the curve modifier is at the same origin as the curve object that is controlling it. So in this case, just choose both and hit Alt-G to clear location. You can move the rope up and down to change its location on the curve. In addition, we could change the fit type of our array from fixed count to fit curve and then choose our curve object. Now our rope will stay the same length as the curve. So if we extrude our curve and make it longer, the rope will stretch out with it. Now you will notice on this side of the rope, there's a disjoint in the normals of our object. That's because one end of the object is butting up against the other end. We can fix this by making sure we check the merged selection in our array modifier. In this case, our distance is too far. So we're going to lower this. And there we go. In this scene, I simply wound this curve around this pylon, stacking it up with each rotation. Of course, one thing you are going to notice is that the ends of the ropes are problematic with this method. Using the start and end cap of the array modifier, you could model some specialized ends for this model. You could put another object over the ends, you could add a boolean modifier to chop off the ends, or you could apply all of the modifiers and then edit the mesh afterwards. 
In my case, I've just chosen to hide the ends of the ropes. So there you have it. Three easy modifiers and a very simple mesh to create a rope object. What you do with this from here is totally up to you. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you next time.